welcome back to the HCW YouTube channel and welcome back to another Indie Spotlight and this time we're not doing a Kamikaze Pro Live show we're doing Kamikaze Main Show Over the Top 9 I believe but yes, we are, Over the Top 9 we are joined by live. a man we're a massive fan of on this channel we only speak highly of him the Carl Robinson how you doing? it was live but it wasn't a live show Exactly. That, that's let's go with that. Um, so it was as of today. It's the twentieth today. So it was the sixteenth, I believe. Um, yeah, four days ago. Only four days ago, the Kamikaze Dojo, which is a banging venue. It was packed out. Um, a lot of new people that hadn't seen before there as well, which was nice. Yeah, I've seen this guy that looked a bit familiar, but first time seeing him, I think it was yourself. Man was suffering from back pain at one point. Like literally, I was leaning against the wall. Uh, but um, we are here to discuss this Kamikaze Pro show. Well, I have my notes, which I've had to take off Discord because I can't keep it on Discord. And now they've gone. So this is going really well. There they are. So we kicked off with a six-man person scramble. Oh, six person, yes. Yeah, you see, you see how I, yeah. Um, so I didn't name them, so I'm going to remember it's them. The it's the all or nothing scramble match, as it was. Yep. Winner, um, the person enters who gets 20. the pinfall enters number 20. The person who gets pinned, pinned yeah, that's the word, um, enters gets beat. number one. Obviously, the same for submission, if they got submitted, etc. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> so we've got Chantal, Nate, Ed, yeah, was it? No, he wasn't. No, Edgar wasn't in it. Chantal, so Nate, have... Alex, no. Luke, yeah. Zach, and Sam. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Um, so it started off with a fun-filled uh, moment of Sam and Nate hating each other as usual. Um, yeah, so they're obviously keeping their rivalry up. The House of Heritage and Zeros to Heroes hate each other. Yeah. And um, my new favourite tag team took advantage of it. Um, Luke and Alex super kicked Nate's face off. Is that team rate wrestle by any chance? Yeah, uh, we're going. I'm, I think it should be called the HCW Bias. That's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> it sounds like a great name. Um, they followed suit with um, a reply from Zach and Nate. Uh, sorry, Zach. I'm confusing who was in this. I mean, Zach and the one Chantel thing drop got... kicked. That was it. But the one thing we've got to note from this with the introductions. Zach is now the second youngest person to debut on the main roster. Yep. But as announced straight after him, the youngest person in was in this match, and that was Chantal Jordan. Yeah, but um, unfortunately that record's been broken, I feel like, uh, which we'll get to there's, a point technically. A, well, as uh, one fan pointed out during the show, because of the gear she was wearing, technically she's now Blue Chant Chantel, like Blue Cantrell. Okay. Um, <laughs> this then, um, after um, na um, Sam was drop kicked, it started a one in and one out kind of scenario where everyone was brawling That's outside. Cool. You'd have two people within the ring hitting their kind of moves. Um, then one person would get a move hit on them. They'd roll out, another person would roll in. The good old fashioned scramble kind of scramble. style. Um, Luke hit a big dive. Um, Nate then hit a I'd like a fun, fun dive um, where he basically walked over the back of three people and then dived outside. I mean, the fact that Luke hit a dive says enough. I mean, Luke hitting a dive. Yeah. Looks athletic as fuck. <laughs> he is, but it's it's something new. Yeah, he doesn't pull them out that often. Um, everyone then started hitting um, their finish um, one after another. Um, couldn't really capitalise because the next person would roll in and hit the finish onto them. Um, Nate, it was then left to knack Zach and Nate because Luke and Alex had a, a good old malfunction at the junction when they were discussing the moves. Um, Nate hit a moonsault on... I'm going to go with Luke. Zach hit a, moon, um, a shooting star press on... Um, Alex, Scammers. and then um, the nice, the nice guy Zach is. He rolled up Nate for the win. Well, he's the future. Yeah, smart. As the as the chant, as the chance literally rang out around the dojo. As soon as he got that win, future chance, full yeah. in, full load. Everyone was 
everyone was on the side of the future. Yeah, like he's not like I said, his winning record on live isn't there, but he's like the match quality he's throwing out, and obviously, first well, match this, he's on the main roster his, wins. I should have say this is his first win, so yeah, it's not bad. Literally, is it winning five face, other people? Exactly, he needs to face more than one person at a time. That's the only way he can win. Yeah. So unfortunately, unless someone gets added to the Chantel match, which um, we'll have a preview on. Um, I rate this two and a half stars because it kind of just ended. I was getting really into it and then it ended. It it was sort of out of nowhere, which I was kind of disappointed, but like it's just one of those I think in a scramble it's yeah, it's gonna happen. Anything could happen. It could either last another ten minutes or it could yeah out of the blues that picked up the win. Um we then move on to the first import of the show. Um good old Richard Holiday made a debut, which is really random. Carry on. I was going to say international imports a bit, yeah. International star, international superstar. There you go, Richard Holiday. Um, we're all lucky to breathe his air. Um, rarefied, rarefied air, <laughs> rarefied air. And he was fighting Edgar Adams, who is on a roll in and out of Kamikaze. Um, for Quite literally being a speedy boy, yeah, speedy boy. Um, Edgar Adams. Um, and then there was a debuting ref. Um, who I didn't catch the name of. Yeah, referee, uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher the name, so give me one second. But it's Laura Kate on the day. Yeah, I've seen so, her around. Referee I think, okay. she, usually referee, she usually referees up north. And the likes of, of TNT, uh, Future Shock, those sorts of promotions before. And yeah, referee Laura Kate. Yeah, she did a really good job all night, I'll be honest. Very um, very authoritative. Um, didn't take shit, which is good. Um, so, at the start, Edgar was trying to um, show his speed. Um, Richard Holiday was taking the piss out of Edgar, trying to show his speed. Um, Holiday rolled out the ring, because obviously the best thing to do is to stop Edgar's momentum straight away and just not be any a part of it. Um, he chopped the soul out of Edgar. Yeah, I think that took the life out of the crowd because everyone felt really sorry for Edgar Adams. But yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I've, I've, I've got to admit, as a fan, because I was a fan at this show, of course, it was I kind of was on the side of Richard Holiday. Remember that you're our GM. Uh... <laughs> I thought we said I'm not the GM at the minute. Oh yeah, remember that you're former GM for now. Um. Also, Edgar falls into the trait of being quite pale, so he will always be chopped. It's the Sat Walker trait, the George Lydon trait. They get chopped and it looks good. Yeah, I was going to say, he'll always get chopped, but he'll always make a mark. That's what you're trying to Seamus, say. Seamus, for example, where against Gunther, just makes a mark. Um, Edgar hit a big dive, um, but then Holiday just kind of took firm control of this. You could tell how the experience kind of edge took over. Um, he had a big spine buster, um, leg on the apron, um, leg drop on the apron. He was going full on a take a move set, back suplex, but um, Edgar reversed it. Um, then he hit a springboard sent on out of nowhere, which was nice. Um, he hit a psycho knee. I thought you were going to bring up something up there, Carl. You feel like you, you look like you're mounted to go. No, I didn't even know what you said, so I'm but just yeah. Psycho knee, you're all. I said because I go knee. Then he, um, then um, Richard Holiday took in control again. He hit like a tiger's um, backbreaker where he flips him into a backbreaker, then tiger bomb. Then he brought out the good old Lex Luger, Luger torture rack, which oh, you don't get to see wow. that often. Yeah, again, I uh, I hate to say the word popped, but I popped for that torture rack yeah i loved it i thought he was just gonna hit him straight into a move or something when he kind of brought him in i thought he was gonna go straight into a move and then he started doing the and it was like yes um edgar then hit his variation of the destino um then he tried to pick up the win with a swanton but richard put his knees up um and then he, i don't know if this is um holiday's finisher but it was like a twist and shout suplex variation um but it did pick up the win yeah, and not not surprised. Like Edgar tried his best, but fortunately he got slowed down this time. Yeah, Holiday knew what he was doing. 
And I, I think it also helps because Richard Holiday, the day before, literally ran a seminar, so he's able to literally pick up what his opponent is all about. And he could have taught Edgar some bad things, be like, you do this in the match. <laughs> As someone that was at the seminar, the, the the promo advice from Richard Holiday, so, so amazing. Yeah, Such Karen's a great guy. Great ball. Um, I read it to him for a quarter, so I did <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah, I was going to say, of course, he wanted to get this match over and done with because he wanted to find a good coffee joint because there's nowhere in Birmingham that does good coffee that he likes. What kind of coffee does he like? No idea, but it's better than the crap that we get. See, like, like, I'm guessing the coffee's not different if he travels up north slightly. I don't know. <laughs> you might have to go back to the US to get that coffee. It needs very, very boutique coffee shops, basically, not your average Starbucks. Ah, so he's a Costa coffee man. No, no, no. Ah, so he's a Nespro, Nesco cafe man. You, you failed on that one. Yeah, I, can't, I couldn't remember another coffee and then I've kind of mixed them up. I could have said Cafe Nero. I could have said Cafe Nero. God damn it. Anyway, um, we move on to a match that was pretty good. Um, we had George Lydon versus um, Jordan Oliver. Um, good old... Did you want to start the chant, Carl? You, you, you tried. But the young dumb, young dumb, young dumb, and broke. Broke. Yeah, love it. Yep. Love that jump. Um, when someone did long after. Yeah. Um, but you just said the word broke. This match um, oh. was kind of like it's a very similar kind of match, as in like George and um, Jordan. Obviously, Jordan's a bit more experienced, but they kind of they have the same style, same kind of size as well. Um, Jordan's just a bit lankier than um, George. Um, it started with some nice wrestling, um, trying to outdo each other, flips, technical prowess, etc., like that. Um, and then they it went into a push fest because they realised they were quite similar and they started pushing each other. And Jordan Oliver can push hard. <laughs> Even his pushing sounded horrific on George. I mean, I've, I've got one thing before we even get much further, but like. The, the the funniest part of the introductions as well. So Jordan Oliver gets announced he's from USA and everyone boos. Probably thought he'd get a cheer when he goes, now residing in Liverpool. <laughs> but <laughs> even bigger yeah. boos. <laughs> even worse. <laughs> we don't like America, but we hate Liverpool worse. Yeah. I went to Liverpool once and got COVID. <laughs> it, um... I think it, it just latched onto you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, big chops. George was getting his... Uh, once again, as I said with Edgar, his soul was getting chopped out of his body. Um, Jordan then hit a big dive, um, and then he was just using his power game because he's a slightly bit stronger than Edgar. Uh, sorry, with George. Um, hit the power whips into the corner. Um, Lydon then hit a flip. Um, Jordan then followed up with an X-Plex on the apron. Um, he then threw him f- at the wall, which nearly broke the wall. Yeah, the, the sound, the foot that came off that wall. Oh, we any idea what's in that next wall, that room? You nearly found out. Next room? Yeah. Uh, there's not a room. Is it just? Is it just pure? That was just the wall, and then it's outside. I, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, that would have been. <laughs> that would have been the thing. Um, the, the place next. The place next door is abandoned, so I don't think there's anything behind it. <laughs> Knows, or there could be something really dodgy behind it. Uh, <laughs> that could be worse. Well, um, we'll, we'll get to that later in the, the, the show. <laughs> story wars. Um, Lydon was then put into a Boston Crab. Um, so he was, Ed, Oliver was trying to end it. He was trying to be smart for it. Lydon then reversed with an Insta Gury. He was then hitting up upper cluts. Then he hit a perfect plex because everyone loves a perfect plex. Um, held it for two. Jordan kicked out. Um, he then hit a roll up into a massive lariat from Jordan Oliver. So, from anyone on live shows, you're used to George hitting the big lariats now. Um, no, Jordan, Jordan Oliver went no, <laughs> absolutely, I blazed him. Yeah, so I think as uh, Alex kind of says, you, you're seeing that more all Japan style coming from George now. So, it, it very much, I mean, especially towards the end of this match, it very much shone. 
Yeah, well, straight afterwards, big boot after big boot on each other, just kicking each other in the face, proper quarter, gabashi, been kick each other in the face. Um, he then hit a springboard cutter um, out of nowhere, followed by George hitting a tiger suplex, and they were proper just going for this at that point. George then hit a shining widow, a wiz- widow? Shining widow? Wizard. A shining wizard, uh, um, great amuter esque um, George uh, Jordan then got him back into the walls, the good old walls of Jericho. Chopped his soul again. Um, he was just working the back at this point. I think he was trying to stop George from kind of uh, making any kind of momentum. Um, George then hit some machine gun chops, the good old um, Kawada Kabashi flipping. <laughs> um, hit a massive big boot, just absolutely kicked yep. his face off. I thought he was going for the lariat. Nope, absolutely just clotted him. I think everyone thought the lariat was coming. Yeah. Then Tiger Driver, uh, which is one of George's synonymous finishes at the moment. And he picked up the win. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing, because the, the one thing I don't think you mentioned, this was for the Relentless Championship too. Yeah, that probably would have been important to mention, wouldn't it? Yeah. And of course, both these competitors quite relentless, but George still the Relentless Champion. Yeah. Like impressive as well. Um, all right, this match four and three, uh, four and three quarters. Like it was, it was so good. I think I've just seen people commenting on the Facebook as well and in Instagram. Like a lot of people saying this was their match of the night. Yeah, no, this was definitely the same match of the night. Um, like it's my I think for me. This, this, yeah. So I think this was my match of the night, and then the next match was just underneath it. Fair enough. Um, we will get on to that in a second. But yeah, Kamika, um, this was probably my highest rated match since Millie McKenzie versus Chantel, which was a banger of a match um, years ago. Well, four or five years ago, that was thinking about it. Good God. Wrestling. Uh, <laughs> but we roll on to the tag team title match. We do. Which of we course... have Sunshine Machine versus the Cheeky Little 08. Um, Cheeky little close personal friends. Yep. So unfortunately, um, um, Colin announced that um, yeah. there, there's going to be a change to the match, but we're going to introduce Sunshine Machine first. They came out, and then he said basically um, they can't appear, and they're going to let us know um, on their socials what's going to happen next. And then TK yeah, Cooper rightly awesome. said at the start, "It's a bit late." <laughs> Yeah, basically, like, there was illness between Crowley and Falcon, and we found out on the socials yeah. within that next day. Definitely should watch that out. Um, Lexus is not uh, happy about that video. <laughs> there, was, there was definitely some storms brewing down south, yeah, I believe winds, it was. Then it started chucking it down. Uh, <laughs> I love the really awkward when he shut the door. <laughs> <It was> just... <laughs> So good. As we say, because of this, we got the debut of the close personal friends, Danny Black and Joe Lando. Yeah, and who, they are a superb tag team. I don't think I've seen yeah. them live. Um, I think this is my first time. Um, so, obviously, this was going to be a fun match. Both teams are fun. Um, Chuck Mambo, the only thing I noticed straight away is um, it is his good old pick it up, pick it up. Who is it? It's a wrist lock! <laughs> yeah. I mean... The, the one thing I'd had to love on this match as well, because I was quite near the front row, well, front row, as yeah. we say, but it was all standing. And the dueling chants of CPF and Sunshine Machine. I even started a little Hey Ho Lando, which obviously Mambo didn't like. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> no. It, it, yes. No. Hey, no. Um, Sunshine Machine were quite dominant for this match for the probably the first like 10 12 minutes they were just absolutely out wrestling uh, CPF I don't know if the occasion of the Kamikaze Dojo were getting to CPF um, like they were Wolf we'll says well, there was quite some size difference between the two teams yeah like, you didn't I didn't Sunshine realize was quite tall. like CPF um, I didn't realize they're, like, they're not like the smaller guys um, yep. But when you get into someone like Chuck Mambo, you, you can tell the kind of the bigger difference on it. Um, oh, yeah. They did have a really good segment um, part of the match, though, where they were hitting like tag team moves out of nowhere, like surfboard, flatliner, roll-ups. Um, absolutely caught Mambo. Um, Black had a proper hot tag, big double-team combos. Um, the backstab of Moonsault was really, really good. Um, there was a lack second save on that, and super kicks everywhere because we love a super kick. 
Um, designated driver. The unfortunate... Hmm? Well, the unfortunate thing, as you say, it's just Lando was the one that was always targeted. I think out of the team, he was the one that they knew to, to pick on. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, that's what I was going to you pick on the uh, the person you think you can get more advantage on, and of course that was Lando to them because Danny Black's a bit more experienced. Um, they tried to hit the designated driver; that was stopped at that point. Um, then frog splashes on um, a Mambo, but then Cooper luckily picked up the save, and then they hit their finish to pick up the win. Um, Rated three and a quarter stars. I did enjoy the match. It's what I say to me it was the one that was just. Close to being the the match of the night, but of course, Jordan Oliver and George Lloyd and Mash. Yeah, that was very difficult stupidly, to insanely good. The George Lloyd, so it yeah. was hard to kind of like, especially. I feel like if this match was slightly further down or further up, but because it was next, yeah. it was kind of like that. So yeah, because it was straight straight after the interval, yeah. we had that one, and but they did they, they, great, and like the the chance for CPF to come back, tag team wrestling chant. Yeah. Who would have thought it? Tag team wrestling, like as I said, we say on the podcast a lot. Like, it's, tag team wrestling struggles a lot around. You don't get that many tag teams uh, like in like the main companies like WWE, AEW. It's always either in eight man tags and stuff like that. That you don't have a proper yeah. tag team cycle. And it's good for people like Some Shine Machine, CPF, uh, cheeky little buggers when they're actually available. Um, well, that's the thing, as you say, because I think especially in the Brit Rest scene, there's not a lot so. A lot of these teams are facing each other up and down the country quite often, and then you've got the odd few they'll face here and there. Yeah, there's not a lot of major ones. You've got like um, Reese and Rogan, who are pretty good, um, that are coming around, True and Lacey. Um, yeah. And then a lot that's of teams thing. split. Yeah, it's like True and Lacey, they're the new hottest thing to put it in, to yeah. put into words. It's like everyone loves True and Lacey, and so rightly so, but it's like you say. Uh, just coming up and everyone's starting to book them everywhere but then they're getting matches against the same people all, all over yeah it's the trouble it's because a lot of teams split up it's like and then obviously there was injuries for certain teams like for example like um the young guns the young guns um yeah. jacob yeah. and alan obviously that happened the hunter brothers are fighting each other in a different company rather well, than being a tag it team just, <laughs> it literally just had one return match but that about that's about it yeah. and then yeah, again, it's it's. I think a lot of it is exposure as well. So that's the good thing. I'm going to give a shout out to Spinebuster Media because the, the things he's doing on YouTube and getting newer faces out there mm-hmm. is so brilliant. Yeah, and then and hopefully just, Kamikaze just, are just, following just, suit. Oh, here it comes. Just cracked open my can of Vive Lemon and Lime. Aldi, give me a sponsor. Um, but yeah, hopefully Kamikaze are following suit. Obviously, they've been, started building tag teams. You've got Coach and Ronnie G. The House of Heritage. The Dream Faces. And, uh, oh, the House of Heritage. And Zero to Hero. And it was good that it wasn't like, as we'll, we'll have a proper preview, but like... One and Done. Yes, One and Done is actually following up, which is great. Uh, moving on, we have the Fighting Females Championship. Um, the reigning yeah. defending champion, Big Match Lana. Uh, longest reigning Kamikaze um, Fighting Females Champion, just to confirm. Also, prior to this, um, TK obviously called out a cheeky little bug because you know you you don't deserve the titles and stuff like that it's something to check out um I mean, Lana's, Lana Austin, Lana's not actually the longest reigning but yeah hmm? according to her she is the longest reigning was Chikara nah nah, nah. that's in, nah. that's including the free time off yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, if you look at the Kabakazi <laughs> records they're so pumped up during that year because everyone's got a like, thousand day reigns everyone's Roman reigns yeah. <laughs> well, as I say technically the the second longest reigning she is. Uh, big match, Lana. Um, versus a debut in a Luna um, who has been tearing up the West Midlands. Um, been doing very well everywhere I've been. She's been like, hotly raved about. And I think she's very, very good. I mean, it's the first time seeing her in Kamikaze for me, but I've, I've announced her for the likes of PEW and seen her in a few other places. It's great to see her in Kamikaze. Yeah, and hopefully, you, well, judging by the chance at the end... Um, they want her back. So hopefully um, we do see her because she was very, very good in this match. Um, so Lu- um, Aluna obviously is less experienced of them. So Lana was absolutely battering her for a start of the match. I think Lana was quite annoyed by the whole se- situation that um, a young girl, the ring girl, caused at the start of the match. 
Yeah, so obviously the Rune Girl normally takes the gear backstage and uh, she didn't want to do it for Lana because she's got quite a lot of beef with her in the past and Lana ended up chucking it at some other ringside assistant, literally chucking it at him with the uh, sunglasses bouncing off the top of his head. And then he put them on, which wound her but up then he gave, yeah. um, but say He gave them to the Rune Girl and you had chance of extensions, which annoyed her. You had kids putting her off. Lana was just really frustrated this match. So, was taking it all out on the Lunar, obviously. Yeah, look, to be fair, Lana's the worst person you can annoy because she works. She's, look, she's hard hitting. But there's, there's two people, and I mean, it's literally of Lana's tag partner in the, the Decibels. So, you got Lana or Ivy, either one. You annoy either one of them, and yeah, you're not in for a good time. I think with Ivy might be worse because of the megaphone. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, Ivy's louder, Lana's just. Ruthless. <laughs> yeah, Lana's an angry person. Um, absolutely battering up. Um, she then she went for a victory roll. Um, on Aluna, Aluna kicked out luckily. Um, Aluna then tried to use more of her athletic style. She uh, um hurricane runners and stuff like that. Lana then just absolutely cut her off. Just went no, this ain't happening. Um, she suplexed her into the corner, which looked grim. Like, because there's nowhere to go, so you just kind of bounce and a drop. It's just like it's always yeah. grim when you go into the corner. Uh, it was very close. Lana hit a massive headbutt because she decided that a Luna must have offended her. <laughs> just absolutely headbutted her out of her soul. Um, I think it was wonderful. Luna then tried to roll her up. Didn't happen. Um, tried to hit a big move, but Lana got her into a powerbomb position and absolutely drove her through the mat. <laughs> Um, and then to add insult to the injury, she hit that like that fantastic rolling forearm that she does. And just oh yeah, the 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 oh, it's just it's just it's just so amazing. It knocks people out literally. Yeah, I remember when I first saw it um, when she had that four way when she first won the title, and she just hit it on everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the, like you say, just that roaring forearm. It's just ah, oh, yeah, perfection. So good. Um, but Lana picked up the win. Aluna was very good in this. As I said, she got a please come back chant. Um, yep. And um, Lana just left at that point. I read it two and three quarter stars. I mean, admittedly, she was advertised for the Rumble. So I think she did come back quite late in the show. Yeah. Please come back. Don't come back now. You've done the Rumble. <laughs> Same for CPF again. The Both both Aluna and CPF, the debuting talent, got the please come back chance, which you want to hear. So did Jordan Oliver, surprisingly. Um Oh, yeah. Well, I guess because everyone thought he's from Liverpool now. Yep. The good old Scouser, Jordan Oliver. Um, and then the final match before the main event, we had the Derby match. Um, the West Midlands Derby, Birmingham Derby. It, it, it was Derby Day. It was said. Derby Day. So you've got um, a returning Gamari, the first ever Kamikaze Pro Dojo graduate, who is a Blues yeah, fan. My boy. Good for him. My boy, Gamari. But I'm, I wasn't liking the Blues. And then um, we had a um, man like the Reese, who um, he was Kamikaze wearing a terrible, champion. terrible looking shirt. Um, I don't like Villa. I'll be honest. Like the, the, the Kamikaze Pro Champion, the lyrical dragon, man like the Reese, coming out with that. When I say oh one on the back of his Villa top, just amazing. But then again, who brings wrestling into the football? Yeah, outrageous. Um, so obviously it started on keep right on chance and flipping. I was well, surprised was, we didn't hear definitely. a crap on the Villa chant. Um, there, was, there was a very big up the Villa chant. Yeah, uh, that, that was much later than the keep right on match wise. Um, it was quite even. Stevens at the start, obviously, um, both on the top of their game. Um, both going for pinfalls. Amari had a really, really close near fall. Like it's yeah. superbly close. It was that close that. VAR came out. Well, he did have to cheat slightly, like the uh, normal City fans. But no, no, the feet that was were on after, the road. if you remember. Jamari didn't cheat <laughs> for the VAR decision. And then Adam did, I think he did the he VAR did. single wrongs. I'm sure you do that if you change. Whereas Adam didn't. I know, you, you do that as you're finding out as well. You do that as you're finding out, and then it's going to. But yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought that then if you, you make a you change. Do. Uh, that that's still so once the decision's made. Okay, oh, you always thought, yeah, the uh, it's just that if I'm thinking if it's of ruled cricket, out, yeah. I might be thinking of cricket. Yeah, because I mean, Darius got a free kick from this as well. We got to remember. 
Yeah. Um, it was. Oh God, I'm going it's back to the surfboard match. Um, Amari then tried to cheat. Man, like the wrist was wow well annoyed by this. They started pushing each other. Man, um, Amari was like, you know, um, Amari was then bumped. Yeah, so I think I think this might have been the free kick actually. Yeah. The the warning, the, the turning off the booking. Yeah, he was booked in the, the match. The, the invisible yellow card. I'm just gonna throw it out there. This is a wrestling match, people. Um, then the shirts are off. Um. The, the one thing I remember as well, both of these are technically 0-1-2-1. Amari returned like uh, Progress Wrestling team with Derice and Dan Maloney and the likes as the 0-1-2-1. So the, these guys, they've, they've kind of come up together as well. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you said they both like, represent the Kamikaze, Kamikaze Dojo. Uh, yeah. um, in Dojo, in Birmingham. Representing some dodgy football clubs. Um Man, that's why the shirts came off. <laughs> man, like the race at a German in the corner. Um, Amari kind of brought back the old school Amari of the axe kick and then the double stomps and stuff like that. Um, man, like the race hit a big cutter. Um, Amari then hit a George Lydon special, let's call it the good old Doctor Bomb. Um, George didn't bring it out in his match, but Amari went, you know what, I'm doing it. Um, and then um, out of nowhere, crucifix bomb pinned by a man like the race to pick up the win. Yep. And I rated three stars because it was really abrupt. Um, and then also VAR and bookings. <laughs> yeah, the shenanigans. Yeah, because like, it's a big match and then that stuff was happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, admittingly, as I say, I, I do admit I wasn't a fan of bringing the football into it, especially we did have dual fans in the crowd. So yeah. there was a bit of a. Rivalry in the crowd, which didn't help much. But yeah, it was it was a great match. Yeah, right, three stars. It was a good match. Man like the Reese retained. Um Amari and Man like the Reese still had a bit of beef at the end of the match, um because you know, he cheated. But then they hugged it out because oh. Yeah, because football. <laughs> yeah, football made but, him do it. That's what Amari <laughs> One thing I note from this as well, this show is Amari is back in the one two one now. He's back in Birmingham, so he is. It's it's great to see him. Yeah, it's great to see him back over here. And then announced on his socials, he's now returned. Excellent. So we all know what we must do at Kamikaze, right? <laughs> Ban him from the arena. Yep. <laughs> Ban the city. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we move on to the namesake of the show, the over the top rumble. Um, I didn't really note this down because it's a rumble and a lot of stuff happens. Um, I, the main points of this obviously will kind of go along because I'm not just going to go this happened, this happened with a one. Um, yeah. so Nate Rowley was your first entrant due to losing the um, all or nothing, um, sick yeah. man gauntlet that's still um, scramble at the start. Number two, sick person. Edgar Adams, Nate Rowley's best friend. Yeah, the, the, the Zeros to Heroes first one's out, and quite a bit of a hug at the start, but then, uh, of course, it's any man for himself, any person for himself, and Nate tried to throw his friend out. <laughs> yep, tried to throw his friend out, and then they battled for a bit and until the third person came in. At this point, I don't know who was who entrance-wise. I can name who was in the match. It was just a lot, there's a lot of entrance. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was TJ Sky, your friend. It uh, was, T- it was a good old redacted, yeah. Um, uh, who came out, um, they worked on Redacted. Then it was Luke Douglas, I believe, was in at that point. He was quite in quite early, weren't he? I don't know if he was in at that point. Yeah, oh, there, there was there was a few that came in quite early, the likes of Luna, Alex yeah. Connors. And then... Uh, yeah, so Alex Connors was in, and then straight after him, music hits. No one knows who this person is. And then music hit, no one's ever heard yet. And then here comes, um, I believe she's going by Red Pen, or Pen Red. Yes, red pen. So it was it was red pen, uh, Penny, the ringside girl, as you mentioned earlier, who ran off after Lana's match with the the, the ringside gear on, and came out wearing the ringside gear, the entrance gear. Yeah, got in the ring. Alex is just like you. <laughs> like, well, not, not only got in the ring, got the loudest reaction of the night. Yeah. Um. Surprisingly, there's a man that takes photography pictures. He seemed to be very very um happy about this. Yeah, I think uh, there was a, a few people there that were very happy. A couple of parents, maybe. Yeah, 
no, it was very good. Um, and she got an elimination. Yeah, the, 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 the teaming of Aluna and Red Pen to eliminate Alex Connors. Because, of course, she's going to eliminate Alex Connors. But then, but unfortunately, unfortunately, the next person out, <laughs> yep. out of nowhere, Lana Hoskins' music hits, and she looks like a woman scorned, like, like absolutely, I'm going to kick your face in. I was like, you can't do this to a child, surely. You can't do this to a child. And, but, admittingly, Red Pen gave her all. She did try a crossbody, but was caught by Lana. Yeah, Lana. Caught by Lana. Throw her out. on the outside. Alex caught her, and everyone was going, oh. throw her back, throw her back, throw her back in. Oh, yeah, so, as I say, she was placed on the outside. Lana then just gave her a little push, of which, as you say, Alex Connors caught her, so it was very nice of him yep. to do that, but then... Drops her on the floor. Yeah, he looked around at the crowd. <laughs> Drops her. Everyone momentum. This was like, yeah. It is what it is. Um, fair enough yep. on good old um, Alex Connors. Um, there was a few debuts on the Kamikaze main roster. You had people like JC came down. Um, JC, Sonny Noss. Sonny Noss, JC. Um, there's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. You had uh, uh, Danny Black uh, was uh, in it. And the, the very surprised entrant from under the ring, because, you know, everyone turned round and looked, looked at the entrance. And uh, there he was, the ring gremlin appeared. Yep, and he picked up a massive win. He pinned like four or five people. The ring gremlin won that match. He, he picked up a win, but also he, got, he, he, was, he was literally rumbling with Jordan Oliver, who seemed to love the ring gremlin for some reason. Yep, loved him. Um, I think he then tried to blow a kiss at Lana Austin. Uh, no, no, no. It's Chantel Jordan. Oh, it was and Chantel got a, Jordan, wasn't it? And got a swift kick round the head. Yeah, that was probably not the greatest move um, going at that point. Um, we're moving on to uh, your, kind of your final entrance at that point, which was, I think, George was like number 17, 18, then Samuel Hughes, and yeah, then... Mario came in. Yeah, yeah. Mario was in. Um, Chuck Mambo was in. Yeah. Ronnie G made a um, a follow. I know he he made it in the um, his his debut before, but yeah, he was in the bank on it. But yeah, Um, and then we had um, number twenty, Zach Walker. Um, Oh, one thing I've got to quickly point in this as well is uh, Ronnie G loves a good dab, but later on in that match, we actually had. Mari do one, and he said it's for my boy Mad Kurt, obviously, which I totally forgot that that was a Mad Kurt thing, and yeah. Ronnie G keep it live in a sort of sense. Yeah. Um, you really are, obviously. Um, but yeah, we had Zach Walker come in at number 20. Um, obviously, the future is here. Um, biggest, yep. best number to be at when you were last in the Rumble. But he didn't make it count, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's just a surprise. But yeah, he seemed to got, he got quite ganged up on, and then he just got Luke went now. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the youngest ones, and what well, this was the thing because I think I believe it was Amari that eliminated him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Chantal and Amari had a bit of beef as well in their elimination. They kind of pushed each yeah. other and stuff. So that looks. That looks tasty. Uh, but this was the thing. The, the final six, I want to say, of the Rumble was all Kamikaze Pro Dojo graduates. Yeah. You had the likes of Amari, George Lydon, Luke Douglas, Zach Walker, Chantal Jordan. The list went on, basically. Samuel Hughes, the link as well, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Samuel Hughes. Yeah, still, yeah. George Lydon also eliminated Samuel Hughes, um, which is going to put him in good step for the title match. Um, that's going to be annoying for Sam. This was the thing, as we say. I think the way it literally ended was, to my recollection, Mari was eliminated by Chantel, Chantel by Luke, and then Luke by George Lydon. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Luke Douglas has like, lasted a rumble. The first rumble um, last year um, was eliminated last. Yeah, I know. Lasted yeah. this rumble for a decent amount of time, was eliminated last, so he's not picking up the win, sadly. Um, and George Lydon is now your number one contender for the anniversary show, I believe. Um, so it's yep, not the next the show, is the limit, um, but it's the anniversary. Yep, it's mid mid year, basically. Yeah, it's normally um, But that's June, the thing. Right? Yeah, so we've got Relentless Champion, Kamikaze Pro Live Champion, 
and possibly the next Kamikaze Pro Champion. Yeah. As um, people were chanting, free belt George. And who knows, it might be might be fighting Man Like the Race, but Man Like the Race might have a title match before that as well, so who knows. And then yeah. you've also got, well, uh, people are forgetting, you've got the Bank On It champion, uh, Bank On It briefcase holder, holder. Yeah. who could ruin Chantel. everything. <laughs> But then Chantal could go for any championship, realistically. She could go for that Relentless. She could go for the fighting females. She could go for the tag yep. team with, um, I don't know who, with herself, probably, because she's Chantal Dorn. Uh- <laughs> but overall, yeah, like you say, carnage of a rumble, I mean, as, as normal. So very hard to say it was a great match because it's always going to be good when you watch a rumble. For the surprise, especially. Yeah, I think I rated three and a quarter, three or three and a quarter. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, and that was the end of the Kamikaze show. Um, finished at eleven at night. God damn it! Um, when the when the rumble started at like twenty to eleven, I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 um. So next show, Sky's the Limit, which is in April, I believe. Is it April? I believe it is. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's every so two months, got, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we, we've got. Two live shows coming up in March, yep. and then, as you said, I believe in April, we've got, we'll probably have another live show, and sky's the limit. Yep, looking present, it's going to be nice to have more than one kamikaze, like a couple of kamikaze main shows of the year, it'd be nice to kind of get a few more under the belt. Um, so, you were going to announce a few things, or discuss a few things about Kamikaze Pro Live? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, as we've recording, literally just before we start recording, Kamikaze Pro Live 41 went on demand on Vimeo, so you can get to watch that amazing show, which featured, as you say, uh, one second, if I quickly remember, I should featured know this one, but the... matches, Zach versus the George. Six man, Zach versus George, but the, the six-man tag team match of the House of Heritage versus Serious Heroes, which, well, oh, just up there. Mm-hmm. It was a great match. It was a great night, very great event. Um, yep. Then we've got Kamikaze Pro Live 42, which I believe is March 3rd. Uh, 42, yes, that's going to have been literally a couple of weeks. And then the Rise of the uh, Emperor, I think yeah, the show is yeah. called, which is going to be yeah. Friday, Friday the Emperor, March 15th. A couple of weeks after. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's the Stetford so. So we're back in Stetford, I love Stetford, and it's an eight man tournament. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, if cause you were there at the show, you Probably saw the posters. The eight men are actually on the poster. Yep, name them. <laughs> I'll come back to you on that one. Yep. <laughs> um, they're all 2.0 graduates, I believe. Uh, Basically, yeah. Um, this is the thing, because of course in the past we had the Rise of an Empress tournament, which actually crowned the first ever fighting female champion. And maybe this could crown a... Maybe a new kind of number one contender, a different way of doing it rather than the roulette rumble all the time. Yeah, I feel like if you win that, that's harder to win than a rumble. You know, fighting three people, um, you're technically on the night. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. As you say, you got match after match after match. It's, it's. I spoke to you, I think, in advance as well, watching the Jersey Jacob, like, mm-hmm. such an amazing tournament. And the fact Jordan Oliver won it in one night, whereas this one just got in was over two nights, so... You're basically an Iron Man if you win this. Um, are you going to be there, Carl? Um, I heard you're having an eye us from certain things. Are you going to be there, though? I'm having a bit of a rest because mentally and physically not all there at the moment, but I'm still around and people can see me at shows. Actually, I had quite a few fans say they thought I'd been in the ring on Over the Top announcing. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people nothing, thought you were going to be doing that. Who's taking over, Carl? Nothing. Who's going to GM these shows? I mean, I'm still the GM as per sense, but just not physically there. Okay, cool. So it's going to be the anonymous raw GM, is it? <laughs> oh, I mean, we had a, a, a very famous zookeeper that does help out. Uh, Maybe he can step back for a few wonderful. times. Another one that's going to screw Connors. That's good. Anyway, as usual, like and subscribe. And watch out this review. There's going to be plenty of kamikaze because there's two shows. So that's four videos for me. Um, we've got a kamikaze tier list, which should be out by now. So I do apologize for anyone that's offended. Um, Number one, Carl it's GM. Um, anything else you want to plug, Carl, except your flipping Aldi deal? Sponsor me, Aldi. Zero sugar as well. Yeah, this video, this video's got no sponsorship. Um, goodbye from me then, I guess. 
and goodbye from him. Oh yeah.